Hello and happy Sunday. Welcome to another episode of Sight Reading Maverick. It's really good to be here. I have sort of a busy afternoon of music making, which I'm really excited about and what a great way to start it off, but by sight reading some music, a great way to warm up for the day. So thank you for anyone that's joining me today. Uh, I hope you're all doing well. As always, beneath the video, you're going to see a list of the pieces I'll be playing in addition to the links to their scores. So you can always follow along if you wish. All right, um, let's see. Last week I had sort of uh, an adventuresome show in that one of the pieces was super, super challenging. And so I think I'm, I'm just about recovered. Um, but for that reason, I think a lot of the pieces on this program hopefully will be a little bit easier. But then again, maybe I shouldn't say that um, or I'll jinx myself. So let's see, it looks like we have Nick with us. So hello, Nick, and welcome. All right, the first piece I'm going to read is a piece by Christoph uh, Nishaman, and this is his Sonata in E minor. He was alive in the 1700s, so it'll be an earlier sonata, which is always a fun challenge for me in terms of ornamentation. Um, we'll see how that goes today. I see lots of turns, and those often get my fingers all a tangle, so we'll see what happens. Um, e minor. Not a whole lot of figure, like, fast figuration in the left hand, but there's lots of dotted rhythms. They all do look like uh, dotted quaver, semi-quavers, or dotted eight sixteenths. And this is within an allegro. So let's see, what tempo am I gonna do? It's always a question of how brave am I at the beginning of my show? <laughs> Um, so obviously looking at these thir uh, 16th notes, but also those dotted rhythms. But I don't like those to go too slowly. And then of course there's the combination of them. So I think that will give me my tempo. Okay. All right, let's give it a whirl. So one, two, three. Thank you. 
I quite liked that. I got a little bit stuck with some of the ornamentation, which I predicted, but I was just trying to stay calm. And um, I really regret that I left out the last frill, but that's okay. I liked that. I was also struggling a little bit with figuring out a tempo that I felt good about. Um, yeah, so I don't know, but that was fun to read. All right. Um, the next thing on the program is I'm going to read, uh, what is it? I changed my order, so I'm a little confused. Giuseppe Martucci's Sonata Facile, Opus 41. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to read. I'm just going to check one thing. Can't tell if the stream is working, so that always makes me nervous. Uh, this was a request from an earlier show that I didn't get to fit on that show um, from Nick. So we're gonna give it a go right now. Let's see how long it is. Um, looks like it's G minor and hmm, it's kind of long, <laughs> but it is only one movement. And it looks like we've got some sort of Alberti bass types of figurations, which will help with the tempo. It's marked Allegro Moderato. Uh, and then we've got several times these repeated chords in the right hand that are marked staccato. So that might also help determine the tempo. And then arpeggios. Um, but it looks harmonically like this is pretty straightforward, which is nice. Mostly just moving harmonically, not a lot of chromaticism. So that's good. A lot of patterns. Uh, we have a little syncopated thing at the transition. So just making sure I know what to do there. Other than that, straightforward. Let me look at that very end. Sometimes they pull out all the stops. Nope, looks pretty straightforward. All right, let's do one, two,
liked a lot of different things about that. Um, I second guessed some of what Martucci wrote, especially when I was in that first half. Wasn't quite sure I was doing it correctly, but then in the recap, I realized I think I was headed down the right path, but I second guessed myself. Um, anyway, yeah, it was a little bit hard, I found, to not make it sound notey. So, uh, and I also kind of thought, oh, maybe I should have taken it a little faster. Might have in some ways made it easier. Um, but I don't know, it's always hard to know. And there were some interesting figurations in the 16ths where it wasn't quite so straightforward to do the fingering, like. That was a little trickier to, to figure out a fingering on the fly, um, especially when it was in the left hand, I found. So that was great. So Nick, thanks for bringing that one to my attention. Um, and this is another one. Nick gave me a lot this week, so I'm grateful. Next is a chanson triste by Vasily Kalinikov. Um, I don't know much about him. This looks interesting. We have another piece in G minor, going with the theme here. And this is in 5-4, and I really do, oddly enough, like that time signature. Not quite sure why, maybe just because it's not, um, well, it's just different. I like the fact that it's an andante. There's a whole bunch of these little grace notes. So I'm gonna do my best to do those gracefully. What do you know? Melodies in the right hand, all the way through. Left hand is just alternating between octaves and then chords in the higher register. So this looks like it's just going to be a nice, beautiful melody here. At the return, it's going to be pianissimo. That's good to keep in mind. Um, and it does look like he divides the measure in three plus two, which is always handy to know. Couple, there's one measure with octaves in the right hand. and straightforward. That would be a great sight reading exercise, of course, for somebody. Um, very doable and nice to get nice melodic um, work in. Cool, 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 cool. Um, all right, next 
I think, I don't even know where this request came from. I think it was from a while back. Um, the next set is some pieces by Arthur Somerville called River Sketches. So, um, let's see. First one is in E major, just three pages. Andante Espressivo. Uh, fastest note value is the eighth note or the quaver. Um, and again, on Dante, there's these two note groupies. So that kind of, that and the dotted rhythm, I think is going to help me choose my tempo. One. repetitive but I liked that. All right next is Reverie. I forgot to say that first one is called Under the Willows. I like that. Okay Reverie. There's no tempo indication um, but lots of 16th notes. be a little bit conservative with tempo just because it's a it's sort of one of those relentless 16th note ones so just to give me time to blink I suppose in the middle Ready?
somewhat shocking. I got to the end. I should have seen this before I read through. But when it went from G minor all of a sudden to G major, I was just completely disoriented. Um, but yeah, quite nice. And then there was also a section where there was lots of extra chromatics and that sort of surprised me too. Oh my goodness, another 16th note one. This one's called Gliding. Marked Allegro. So maybe I'll try to get the 16th a little bit lighter. I wasn't so pleased with that in the last one. Oh my goodness. Okay, um, starts in G major. Briefly goes to D minor. And then back to G major. And he doesn't slip back into D minor. That's good to know. Um, so I'm going to try to just really not worry too much about the 16th, just see him harmonically and see how that goes. just a little tiny bit in that but um that was kind of fun I think these would make good little pieces I like them for the most part <laughs> okay next one is Twilight and Andante this looks like a little bit of a thicker texture um, but more homophonic we don't have all those running notes so that's kind of nice another wah tempo uh, we have 16th notes tempted to take this too fast, so I'll try to be safe. Ah, there's a weird rhythm down here. Syncopated, that's good to know.
I guess that's all of the river sketches. Oh, I was hoping there'd be another one. Okay. Um, next. Next is another request from Nick. And this is Alexis Chauvet's uh, Formoso Morso. And he requested numbers three and number number three and number four. Um, let's see. Okay. First one is a Garcus. This is in A major, it looks like. And this one, I haven't had a lot of chromaticism this show, and this looks like that's going to give that to us. Um, so that'll be fun. Most of that chromaticism is in the left hand, it appears. So actually, that encourages me to look. When there are accidentals, it looks like the left hand is really largely moving in half step. So that is easy with a couple exceptions, but okay, melody in the right hand all the way throughout. Just two pages, not bad. So obviously not too fast because it's a lullaby. This looks like it could actually be hard to pull off musically um, because if the melody's in the right hand, it's a very slow melody and it's not very varied. So I don't know, maybe we'll find that this eighth note thing is actually more the melody. I don't know, we'll find out. No, I don't think so. some goofy things in there, but I quite like that. Um, and then the next one is Musette. So this looks more upbeat and we're towards the last third of the show. So I'm going to go ahead and just read. Looks like two pages and there is a return to the beginning. So that's good to know. 
yeah, I'm gonna try to push myself a little bit tempo-wise just because I've had a lot of um, more accessible pieces today. We'll see where I am. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, all right. And then next, we're going to move on to Rudolf Frimmel's Five Summer Idols. And these look very straightforward, too. So we're just going to have fun with these. This first one is Muri Muriel. I think that's somebody's name. I guess it's supposed to be a wolf.
Very nice. And I think um, because these are a little bit easier to read, I'm actually not. I'm going to see what happens if I don't look ahead. I'm saying that because I forgot to look ahead in that last one, and I thought, ah, maybe that's a good challenge for the show today. Oops. Okay, so I'm not going to look. Except I will look at the tempo indication. that was fun. Our next one is Lotus Blossom. Moderato Appassionato. Next is fireflies, and it looks like we've got a polka. Oops, I'm not supposed to look. Ah. Okay, this looks like a little trickier. Those are just off the part. All right, 
I'm not gonna go too crazy. One. beforehand uh, but whatever it makes it more fun all right and then I think this is the last of the set this is solitude moderato straightforward really good for students so that's maybe something good to keep in mind um, because I have a little extra time on the show there's a whole bunch of collections of sonatinas by various composers um, that I still haven't read all of them so it would be tragic not to read them all right so I think I am going to read one of them now let's see what should I do I think I'm going to do one of the sonatinas I have yet to read by Spindler. Um, okay, I'm just going to pick one. So here's, and I'm sorry, you won't have the score. Uh, this looks interesting. This is in G major, and it looks like it's a couple different movements, but the slow movement is like beyond slow. So we'll see what happens. No idea what to expect. And this one, I'm just going to read too. Okay. Ah, wait.
charming, except for my little uh, errant F sharp there. Let's see. Oh, somebody else is here. Yay. Hello, welcome. Okay, now here's the slow, the shortest slow movement I've ever seen. And then it's gonna go right into a very fast thing, which should be an interesting end to the show. Let's see what happens. because in that last run intense that was going up, I sabotaged myself because as I was going up intense, I was literally thinking instead of reading the notes that um, I should have done my technique exam when I was at Eastman because that probably would have just rolled right off without a care in the world. And actually, I probably could have done it today, but I just got in my own head. That happens. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see, I have a couple notes here. How many hours do you think you can effectively work on sight reading a day? Um, uh, I don't think you can do it. Like for me, at the end of an hour, I get pretty tired. But the other thing I tell people is that it's actually, I think, more important to develop the skills that are involved with making sight reading easier. So actually, and you can do that in the context of solo practicing or whatever. So things like not looking at the keys, um, thinking in hand positions, uh, working on rhythm, counting out loud, those are actually good things to do in addition to just practicing straight sight reading like I just did in my show. Um, anyway, so yeah. So thank you all for joining us today. Um, and for anybody that's watching afterwards, I am going to put a link to that final sonatina I did in the show notes so that you can follow along. Um, but thank you, Nick, as well, for sending in those requests. And I hope you all have a great week. I think next week's show is on as well. So I hope to see you back here. Until then, happy sight reading, happy music hearing.